back. And now we should have audio on Twitch. Check. Hello? Nope. There it is. Okay. Longer lag on Twitch than I anticipated. Okay, so now I can mute that. And start streaming on Dementia Radio. And recording in three, two, one. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org, it's the Funny Music Podcast. Brought to you by TheFunk.com, where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hey, Devo Spice. Hey, Luke Ski. We have Captain Ambivalent in the house. Hello. Oh, Captain, my Captain. And we will have a pre-recorded interview with Insane Ian coming up later in the show. Well, what, did Ian have something important to do tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to episode 596 of the Funny Music Podcast for November 18th, 2021. Clarify Thin Gossip. It's the title of this week's episode. Your challenge is to work that into our conversation sometime this evening. Um, okay, so sorry for, the, sorry for the late start this evening. I had to go pick up my son from swim practice. You know, it happens occasionally. Um, so let's do the thing. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? Oh, he's oh, right. Boy. So Luke, what you been up to? Oh, uh. You know, the the usual, um, <laughs> getting my hopes up about potentially getting a job and then having those hopes, you know, kind squashed of, like a bug, not squashed. It's more like, you know, <laughs> it's like if they ju- if they just got back to you and said no, it'd be like, oh, well, OK, and you can move on. But it's like when they don't get back to you at all. It's yeah, just, I, just like I, th- I think I found your problem. You you keep using the the Acme job generator submitter. Yes, and it just it keeps blowing up on you. So that's that's the problem. Yeah. And I, I don't want to get into specifics on it, but this person is from a studio who I've uh who who like reached out to me um uh in in what was it, it must have been like late September or something like that, and has like and is basically kind of. Hit me up to be like, oh, are you? Inter- would you be interested in in you know? I'm I'm gonna share your portfolio with our with with the team from this project to see if they would want to, you know, hire you. You know, when would you be able to start? You know, asking a couple questions just to see. So basically, I'm like waiting to find out if I'm going to get a chance to, you know, quote unquote audition for, you know, uh, a position on that show. So that happened a couple months ago, and then you know the the person you know got back to me like you know less than a week later and said like oh they chose other people it's like oh okay, and then since then there's been a couple other things that have come along and the most recent of which is something uh, a project that I would really 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 want to be on, and just not to I won't explain all the things but basically I am under the impression that perhaps my emails are going to this person's spam folder because. I sent that person an email about the same project on the 11th and they didn't respond to it, but then they sent me a message on their own on the 12th asking if I would be interested in being in the project. <laughs> so it's like, did you not see the message from the day before where I specifically yeah, I, said I wanted to, you know, I would definitely ask if, if their messages are going to spam because that could be yeah. a problem. So yeah. I, I, so I, I, in fact did send off a message like that, uh, it was either yesterday or two days ago, and um, I even went to that person's uh, page on LinkedIn and tried to send them a message that way, and uh, and and I've heard nothing back. So I'm basically sitting here really bummed out because I'm assuming that I am missing an opportunity to be on this really great project that I would love to be on because I know that you know, well, you know, in any industry, but in this industry, the 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 notion of not just getting work, but getting to work on something that you really like and you're really excited about is like super rare. Yeah. So it just, I just feel like it's like, you know, extra bummed to, you know, 
know that like this opportunity seems to be, you know, passing me by because of an, a technical glitch and uh, you got a phone sucks. number you can call them. I actually, I got a phone number in the, um, in the signature of one of his earlier emails. And when I called it, the thing said that that number hadn't been set up yet for voicemail. <laughs> so it was like, uh, nope, so it's like, again. <laughs> it's like, you know, the, it's, cause you've known me for, you know, whatever, 20 years now. It's like, you know, that those times when like, I go like completely way over the top going like, you know, like Brack or something. Yeah. And, you know, do like making a post like that to be like, like either a specific person or a specific bunch of people is not paying attention to me. So I'm going to, you know, go big and act large and ridiculous to try to get attention. It's like, that's all, what all my instincts are telling me to do, but that isn't exactly the professional thing to do <laughs> in the Hollywood animation industry. So it just sucks. Cause it's like, part of me is saying like, you know, do the big blah, blah thing. And you know, Kyle has advised against it. So, and, and, and I see his point. I'm not saying he's wrong. It's just like, it just sucks to me sit here going like, yep, this opportunity is pretty much blowing right by me. And it also kind of means that <laughs> to, to my mind, it's like, if this guy is in charge of talent recruitment for this studio and my emails aren't getting through to him, no matter how many times he emails me to say, Hey, you want to be a part of this thing? When I email him back, he's not going to get those responses. And so I'm never going to work for that studio. So that's where my brain is at on all of that. Yeah, um, I would definitely try to keep calling him. And in fact, try calling like the studio and getting a desk number or something. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what else could I talk about? Well, uh, in happier news. So I have the uh, AMC app that and I sign up for like when movies get added, like before the tickets are available, but they add it to their app and they say, well, you know, we'll alert you when the when tickets for this movie go on sale so that I can try to snag tickets for like, you know, opening night, for, you know, showings and stuff like that. So I signed up for that for Ghostbusters Afterlife uh, to get a, a ticket for tonight because tonight is the official release date. So I have one for tonight at 1030 p.m. But then a few days ago. I got another alert from uh, AMC's app saying that they added another showing uh, on Wednesday, which was yesterday at 7 p.m. for, uh, you know, they just listed it as early access, and I immediately snagged the ticket, so I got to see Ghostbusters Afterlife last night. Nice. And, oh, it's so good. Oh, my gosh. It's like, the less I say in any specifics, the better, because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but, oh, my God, this movie is so, so friggin' good, and that's why Ian isn't here. He is off seeing... <laughs> Ghostbusters Afterlife, <laughs> as we would expect him on opening night of such a film. But, oh man, so great. I, I look forward to talking about it on future podcasts that, you know, where when it's safe to talk about it without spoiling anything for anybody. I'm hoping um, to go see it this weekend. I, my, my son has a swim meet that I'm going to be, we're going to be going all over for, and I'm probably not going to be allowed into the venue to watch. So um, I'm may sneak away to go see it but on the other hand my wife mentioned she may want to go see it which would be the first movie she's seen in the theater in 15 years <laughs> maybe more i can't remember the last time she was in a theater mm. um it's, it's great it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> she hates theaters she hates movie theaters so yeah so but but she saw the preview with with the cute little stay puff marshmallow men like you know, on the shelves and stuff. And she's like, I may have to go see this. So, so we'll see. I'm going yeah. to see it, whether she comes or not, but <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what have you been up to since last week? Um, I resume putting my little recording booth thingy together. I got a desk, which just barely fits in the back of the, of, of the studio. It looks, you know, it's perfect. It's exactly what I needed. Um, and I got my foam, which I I pulled out and originally I was disappointed because I thought I, I, I they mistakenly sent me one inch foam and then I started doing the return thing to exchange it for two inch foam and then I was like wait a minute does doesn't this stuff like compress and I'm like oh yeah it's vacuum sealed I need, and then I looked it up and I'm like yeah I'm supposed to let it sit for 24 to 48 hours and I'm like oh okay yeah that makes sense so I laid it out on my my floor in the other room over there and it's been you know growing like shrinky dinks or something i don't know um 
So it's it's the next step is to actually stick it to the walls and stuff, and then that room will be pretty much done. Um, then I can start using it for things, which will be good. Um, and also, we had I had my film class on Tuesday night where we actually got to see the the final result of the short film we shot the previous week. Um, the, the four of us as ghosts standing around, you know, sitting at a table talking, and it, ca- it came out pretty good. Um, it's only a minute and a half long. Um, next week, uh, he's going to post it to the internet somewhere, so I'll have a link that I can share for people who, who are interested in seeing such a thing. Um, I didn't do any writing or anything on it. I was strictly an actor, um, but it came out pretty cool. It was neat. And I only have two two classes left of the uh, of the film program. So, uh, cool. All right. All right, Captain. Howdy. Um, so what have you been up to? Oh gosh. Well, I had a little uh I had a little tour in uh September and uh you know, planned in January when it looked like that that would be a safer bet than it turned out to be. But the <laughs> uh the outdoor gigs were great. The indoor gigs, people were just not quite coming out yet again. And uh So anyway, that was that <laughs> <laughs> cool um your video is a good five seconds behind your audio i have been noticing this and uh <laughs> it is yes it's like the ultraman dub effect yeah and i'm not sure this is the like zooming with you guys i think this happened last time and zooming with you guys is the only zoom where this happens and i have no idea why interesting and i just don't uh yeah i don't know if i can do anything about it so that's... <laughs> there we are. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I I can deal. I can deal. Um, <laughs> it's like with the with the aid of the Tasuti capsule, Yate becomes Ultraman. <laughs> yeah. And now you'll see me make an X in about like thirty seconds. Yep. here. Wow, it's getting really bad. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to try to reboot my camera anyway. Okay. Uh, but... <laughs> so. <laughs> and he disappears entirely. Now all we see is the background. Entirely. Yeah. Let's just start this again. Let's see if this is even going to work. No. <laughs> oh well. Uh, maybe a, I'll just get like a little sock puppet. <laughs> it's stuff. neat, anyway. Um, oh. All right. So, so give us a quick intro to the song, and we'll give it a listen. <laughs> all right. Okay. So this is one of those those real life inspired songs. Um, uh, my uh, a theater friend Lauren, who's a stage manager, and she's great and competent. Everybody loves her, and she posts a whole lot of selfies on Facebook. And it's just that, unfortunately, a lot of them. There was one in particular There was like, I think there was like two other people and her. It was in the middle of the night. It was raining. There was this huge streaky blur. They were backlit. Their eyes were glowing red. It was kind of cocked at a weird angle. And I just wrote the song and she's okay with it. It's her theme song now. So it's not like it was not a mean thing. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, here you go. All right. Here is She Takes Bad Selfies Polka by Captain Ambivalent. She takes bad selfies and posts them all the time. Most of them are blurry, some have glowing eyes. She takes bad selfies and posts them every day. She takes bad selfies, that is just her way. She won't use pill flash or autofocus. She won't use filters. She thinks they're bogus. She will not rotate. She will not crop. No, she takes bad selfies and she will never stop. She takes bad selfies with anyone around. Some are way up high and some low to the ground. Some of them are backlit like alien abduction. She takes bad selfies, but that is how she functions. She takes bad selfies. She takes bad selfies. She won't use pill flash or autofocus. She won't use filter. She thinks they're bogus. She will not rotate. She will not crop. She takes bad selfies and she will never stop. She takes bad selfies everywhere she goes Everything she's doing, everybody knows She takes bad selfies, cause that's her style Everyone is happy just to see her smile Everyone is happy just to see her smile She takes bad selfies She takes bad selfies Nice. Thanks. So it's interesting that this was inspired by a real person, a real event. Yeah. And she's okay with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I did check. <laughs> well, that's that's important. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Um, so yeah, the the polka sounds great. I, I really dig the, uh, the the sound you have going on here. Thanks. That's uh, the only. Uh, yeah, I don't do really very much in the way of of pseudo polka, and everybody of course assumes that I must since I have accordion. But, right. Um, like I steered away from it because Weird Al's polka medleys are so fantastic that I just didn't even want to get into that space. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I think th th yeah, this was different enough. It just sort of. Yeah. I mean, you got the accordion. You have to do it once in a while, right? Yeah, I think. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Exa exactly. <laughs> kind of a rule, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So the other, the other, uh, the other story that I hope is entertaining about the song is that uh, back on my first album, my my good friend uh, from college, Mark Fry, did this prog rock keyboard solo for a song. Uh, it was called "You Can't Sing You're Ugly" in the '60s are over, and uh, basically he got busy and he had a he had a a kid after that and and uh so my second album i like took that same solo and chopped it up and put it on the the, the hero song and now that same solo chopped up a little bit more is on this polka <laughs> are all three songs in the same key um i yeah uh <laughs> let's see i think i had to do something to it now i, I can't remember the exact manipulation but it wasn't too much uh they were they, they were close i didn't have to pitch shift it too far if i did have to we'll put it that way but, okay <laughs> uh, i don't know so That's it's kind of, maybe it's just inside my head joke so. Get, getting, getting <laughs> a lot of mileage out of that one solo then yeah exactly exactly now it's kind of like a it's kind of a thing i don't know it's like a running like gag my version, my version <laughs> of the wilhelm or something yeah. there's um uh, trauma did that in some of their movies there's there's a shot they did of a it was a stunt shot of a car that went off a ramp and then flipped over upside down and landed on its on its top and they've used that exact same shot in like three or four movies now and it's become a gag like to the point where like you're in a chase scene and it's a completely different car it's a completely different color but they cut to that shot they the car flips over and then they cut back to the other car and and they and the people get out like oh man that sucked you know <laughs> um have you guys ever seen danger five i have not it, it was a long. It's worth. Uh, it's worth looking up. It was like a very cheesy action movie. I think it's from Australia. Parody. It was a web web series thing, and and they have a, they have one stunt shot of a guy jumping through a plate glass window, that they use, in like almost every episode. <laughs> That's awesome. I always wanted to do something where like, either a skit or a short film or something with you know an action movie with lots of people getting shot and every single person who gets shot gets a wilhelm scream just so it's like yeah. ah, <laughs> ah, ah. it's just every single one <laughs> all right so so how is the the touring been going you said a lot of people are still aren't you know showing up to the indoor shows that's what yeah that's what i that's what i kind of found unfortunately i mean the there was an exception in one place that seemed to have like a really extra high level of COVID denial, but um, <laughs> yeah, they'll show up. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that place was packed and there were drunk people hanging off, uh, hanging off of me and everything. No, no, they were, they were very nice. They were wonderful people. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I did get tested when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good move. Yeah. But Just you, you perform at like, like Renaissance fairs and, and conventions and stuff, right? Mostly. Um, so mostly uh, my tent poles are like, outdoor outdoor um like outdoor summer eventy things uh and and gen con has been in the past and mm -hmm. so this was a tour a more like attempt at an experiment with a more traditional tour of like different like mm -hmm. i don't know combination of like uh, bars restaurants uh bookstores in the mix you different perform at bars yeah so the so yeah the ones that wanted me to interesting it it's uh I, and it wasn't like i got a bad reception at, at any of these places it was just that they were having a hard time getting people to come out at all for anything um, yeah I, i'm just trying to picture you performing at a bar and i'm not picturing it going well well the um <laughs> if it's it depends on it has to be the right venue so like these are places that, that actually wanted that affirmatively wanted me okay not like that I was hound hounding into letting me perform there. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've performed so, at bars and it generally hasn't gone well. It's uh, it can depend. Like 
like before before actually doing a tour with booking assistants to get the right places i've tried to perform at bars and it just depends on who's there yeah and if they're into it or not and i did actually on the tour i had one there was one one place that was just uh there were like a couple people that were into it, but there was like some big uh, office retirement party going on and they were just not there for music at all. So yeah. Cause, like, cause I, I did a bunch of bar shows for a little while just to try it, you know, just try out the scene. And what I found was that the people who go to bars, they want the music as background. They don't want to pay attention to it. So like one of yeah. number one, they want cover songs cause they want songs that they know and, and love. And number two, they don't want comedy. They don't want anything they have to pay attention to. So I was okay. mostly just, you know, doing my bit in the corner, being completely ignored. I got a couple of weird, yeah. like, glances. People like, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, I got a couple of those. <laughs> but for the most part, I was completely ignored. So I think that, like, doing, like, um, whatever, I had some I had some booking help. And, and uh, it just, yeah, it just did a good job at finding places that were that were a fit i think even you know even if the turnout wasn't great so Mm -hmm. it wasn't you know it wasn't it wasn't horrible there were places that wanted wanted the comedy they wanted the weird stuff i think the best ones were these like outdoor beer gardens it was like all ages that i could see Uh, yeah that i I could see you fitting in well with there those were the very best and they were out you know they were outdoors they were packed with people that would those were the definitely the best um, and there were some good indoor ones too, but where the you know like the two the handful of people that were there appreciated it mightily. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to try to do that. I think I, I may stick with my regular, uh, you know, uh, I guess the, the recur the regular recurring ones next year, and not try to tour again until we get a little bit more handle on on pandemic things. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if that's ever going to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't know either, but it seems like, uh, yeah, but just like the amount of work it involved is is huge enough that, uh, yeah, I don't yep. know. I'm just going to, I'm going to get my booster shot soon. And if they say I need another one next year, I'll get another one next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but keep getting boosted. Uh, yeah, it's just it's tough to do things where you're where you're planning like six months in advance. Yeah, and someday I'll get that you know super powered magnetism five G. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm rooting <laughs> <Exactly>. for. <laughs> I know we got all these boosters and don't have five G yet. I mean, geez. <laughs> I have to wonder: Are other countries in the world? D- are they dealing with this too? Because from my point of view, it seems like they aren't. Like. It's like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just, I just feel like, like, like if you go to like any of the, you know, major countries in Europe, like there's no backlash against getting the vaccine because they're like smart and educated. You know? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, Britain, I, I think. Yeah, I've heard England has its share of, of like COVID deniers and vaccine conspiracy theorists. Um, but yeah, that seems to be about it. Everyone else seems to be doing a much better job. You know, their problem is getting the vaccine because they don't, you know, they got it later than we did. And, and they're still having, you know, distribution issues. But, yeah, it's just mostly us. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> USA, USA. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Merca. All right. So do you have anything you'd like to plug? Oh, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, the turkey pardoning season is upon us. Mm-hmm. So on on the Twitter on the Captain Ambivalent Twitter stream, I'm posting a a very stupid uh, web comic. Uh, Enter the Turkinator, about the adventures of a time traveling turkey avenging his fallen brethren or attempting to on former U.S. presidents, and it will culminate in an actual song. Uh, so check that out if you have nothing better to do. That sounds awesome. <laughs> And use it to torment your family with at Thanksgiving time. Cool. So where can people go to find that? Uh, that's on the, the Captain Ambivalent Twitter. Um, there's a link on CaptainAmbivalent.com or it's like at C-A-P-T-N Ambivalent because I'm longer than a Twitter handle. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So cool. So we're going to move on to news and tour dates and stuff. You're welcome to stick around if you like. You're welcome to take off if you'd like. 
Uh, we'll have a, a pre-recorded interview with Ian. You'll have to sit through later if you want to stick around. <laughs> um, all right, let's do some news and stuff. This is the fault. I think we're safe and this pimp's a drag. So come get banged in my sleeping bag. It seems the last mistake that we're ever gonna make was having our first day to camp Crystal Lake. You there. What you wanna be when you grow up? I'm gonna be an R&B singer. Well, that's dumb. You in the back with them baby hands. What you wanna be when you grow up? I wanna be a Teen Titan. Baby, I can do it. I know I'll be a Teen Titan tonight. I can do it. I can do it. That's the Funny Music Project at theflump.com. T h e f u m p dot com. About your recent frequent tweeting, and I wonder what good old Harry would say. Your mean tweets we've been surfing. Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, uh, Drew Jacobs' Kickstarter, I have graphics, uh, is up to $361 of his $600 goal. He has 10 days to go, so there's still time to get involved on this, so please help him out. Head over to kickstarter.com, search for Drew Jacobs, Christmas Ball Busting is the name of the album, nine tracks of Christmas comedy songs. Let's get him over his goal. And speaking of Kickstarters, Bonnie Gordon's Kickstarter is up to $15,931, which is more than twice her $7,500 goal. So congratulations, Bonnie. Uh, She has 23 days to go, so about three weeks left if you want to get involved in that, if you haven't already. Yeah, her next stretch goal, I believe, is $20,000, and she wants to use that to make a music video for uh, for the lead song on the album. So... Sounds yeah. good. Just want I wanted to make sure people knew that. I wanted to uh, you know clarify any thin gossip that was going on reg- regarding that. Hey! Now you made me switch scenes, which means when I switch back to the news, we have to sit through this again. Time for <laughs> funny music news. <laughs> something, something, something. All right, fine. <laughs> no, note to self: make a copy of that of that uh, title thing in the news section. <laughs> All right. Um, and speaking of Kickstarters, no, nope, that's not it. I know I, there it is. Uh, Jeff Whitmire has a new Kickstarter uh, for his new album, Stabby Road, which is a, co- a comedy songs about horror movies. And that is possibly the greatest album title I've ever heard. I love that title. Yep. <laughs> um, his goal is $5,000. He is currently sitting at $1,631 with 24 days to go. So help Jeff out. Go over to kickstarter.com, search for Jeff Whitmire, Stabby Road. You will find it. Why do I still have Ian up here? That's Illinois. Okay. Um, and the Fump Volume 89 is now available in the store at thefump.com. Features all the songs we posted in September and October of 2021, including Toys by the Great Luke Ski, Yay! which you can see plenty of on the cover, which Luke put together. <laughs> uh, Pumpkinhead by Devo Spice, Final Girl by Jeff Whitmire, Her Explain by Bad Beth and Beyond, Dungeon Castlevania by Insane Ian, and many, many more. Plus a video of Ian performing Dungeon Castlevania live at FumpFest 2021. And a big thank you to Dr. Don for providing some of the footage uh, for that video. Uh, It is available now on CD or as a digital download. It will be uh, showing up on streaming services shortly and should go out to subscribers tomorrow if all goes according to plan, if not Saturday. All right. Anything else before tour dates? Uh, don't think so. All right. Door dates. On Sundays online, uh, I'm sorry, on Sundays in Nashville, Tennessee, Steve Goody hosting at the Bluebird. On Tuesdays online, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. On Thursdays online, Steve Goody and Brad Tassel. And on the 23rd, um, online, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. All right. Second song of the week is by Insane Ian. Seems like he was just on. Um, 
Here is Corey Can't Even by Insane Ian. But Corey can't even And he won't listen to what our boss will say Cause Corey can't even There's no more ink in the fax machines And Corey can't even And he won't ever tell me what it means When Corey can't even Corey can't even deal with this He can't even say what Corey can't Even with this shit He's completely lost the ability At the Mickey D's And Corey can't even And you refuse the vaccine for that disease And Corey can't even PlayStation Network is down again And Corey can't even And the world blew up and now everyone's dead And Corey can't even Corey can't even Not at all I'm telling you that Corey can't even Appalled. He is literally incapable to even They took away McRib again Hair is nothing but split ends Got a splinter in his thumb Co-workers are acting dumb Hero foiled his master plan Ring came off his pudding can Godzilla showed up today Car blew up like Michael Bay He can't even, she can't even, we can't even They can't even, you can't even, I can't even Just can't even, cannot even Corey completely unable to even I'm here with insane Ian. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ian. Hello. So, uh, so can you even? I can totally even. My friend Corey cannot. Corey mm. is completely unable to even. Uh, so this song is uh, based on a real person. <laughs> oh, it is interesting. Yeah. So I uh, one of the, one of the jobs I had here, one of the office jobs I had here in Chicago. I was working with this dude named Corey and he could not even most days. And I told him, I'm going to write a song about you called Corey can't even. And here it is. Uh, <laughs> is he aware of this song? Has he heard oh, yeah. it? Oh yeah. No, I, 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 uh, I tagged him uh, on Facebook when the song came out and I sent it to him and all that. And I warned him earlier in the week that it was coming out and he was like, wait, Oh, wait, really? And of course he couldn't even about the song. So uh you know it's it was it, it was one of those things where i was like yes this this must happen and uh he needs to comment either on facebook or on the thump and just say dude i can't even and just leave yeah. it <laughs> yeah I, I i he definitely commented on on when i on the link when i tagged him on facebook so but yeah nice. it's uh it's uh it's 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 very much in the vein of uh nerf herders jackie got married it's kind of the the pastiche style I was trying with this one. Okay. And uh, that's kind of like what I had in my head. And apparently, I didn't realize this, but the PDX broadsides have a song called The Girl Who Couldn't Even. Oh, yeah, that's right. I completely, like, 
shot over my head could not re- did not remember that that song existed and i was like oh crap i wasn't trying to rip anybody off or anything like that but uh, it's, it, people come up with the same ideas it happens it happens it happens in comedy music all the time so yes. uh you know <laughs> great minds share the same gutter mm. but uh you know <laughs> luke and i are constantly like dude are you gonna parody this song like i got this idea you want to make sure you know oh <laughs> no even on my first album like when I did uh, Silent Bob as a parody of Sabotage, I was worried that Luke was going to do it first because <laughs> it was a so Beastie I, Boys parody. So I got this idea of doing a parody of Dr. Worm called Dr. Who. How do you feel about that? You know, I think it may have been done a couple times, <laughs> not only by me, but by somebody who has an album that it's on already, too. Um, and, and saw you perform it. And saw me perform it. So, yeah, that was. He is never going to live that down. No, Brian is never going to live that down. <laughs> Brian Sebi, thank you for this uh, wealth of material that we now have. Yeah, we, we love you, dude, but we are never going to let you live that no, down. No, no, no. For those of you out there who <laughs> don't know what we're talking about, uh, Fump Fest this year, I did my set and I have my song Doctor Who. And uh, Brian Sebi is a friend of ours. He's, uh, he's in a couple of Chicago uh, improv troops uh, and, uh, you know, is, comes to the cons all the time. And during dumb parody ideas... He did a parody of Dr. Worm also, and also called it Dr. Who. And he did it at the moment that I was not on stage. He did it when I had left briefly to go use the restroom because I was hosting dumb parody ideas. And he and as I came back, he was finishing the song and people told me what he did. And I went, wait a second. Not only are you a friend of mine, you have one of my albums that has it on it, a live version, and you were here for my set yesterday where I performed it again. How did you not know I did it? (laughs) He just uh, wanted to emphasize how dumb an idea it was. Yes, clearly. (laughs) It's like like when when, uh, the library bards first came to Fump Fest and Breakman Z did Pokeball as a parody of Wrecking right. Ball. And yeah. they came up and said, that's on our album. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he had heard their, their album yet. No, though, no, that was their the first thing. time. You know, but again, it's, it's, it's more along the lines of, you know, a lot of these ideas are, you know, everybody comes up with a, with a similar idea for a song. Yeah. Um, what there, there's actually an alternate mix of this song too, that I have on my Patreon. Uh, a completely different mix. Uh, the music is the same. My lyrics are the same, but the backing vocals kind of changed the feel of the song. Oh, interesting. When, when we were, when I was writing this song and, and telling Ben what I was thinking of for this song, I not only mentioned uh, Nerf Herder's Jackie Got Married, but I also mentioned the song Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra. And, uh, you know, he kind of, in his backing vocals leaned more towards Scotty doesn't know than Jackie got married. So it kind of gives the song a completely different feel. So for my $5 and up patrons on Patreon, they get that alternate mix of that song, which again, it's, it's a completely different song sounding and feeling because of the, the way the backing vocals, it's more of a gang vocal song and uh, it's really interesting. Neat. You should release the stems to your Patreon backers and see what you get back as a remix. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've considered that, but I, I I don't know if I would do that with this one. Probably one of the more hip-hop songs, see if mm-hmm. I can get a, a remix out of those. Speaking of which, new video. Yes. Yeah, so tell us about the video. The video is neat. Oh, man, I'm so happy with this video. So, yeah. Your so, hair is more orange than mine is. Yeah, well, that's the wig that came with the Futurama <laughs> costume. Uh, so I, uh, I did a video for Delivery Boy, and it was directed by Patrick Murphy, Murphington of... Uh, who has a directed videos for Psycho Stick and uh, handles their he does their, their yeah he does their live feed too which is he does, he does as, as far as I'm feed. concerned like the gold standard of live performance streaming I yeah. mean it's it's yeah, amazing it's unbelievable what they're doing and they just moved into a new studio too so it's a bigger studio so they have space for the live feed and for filming videos and stuff when I went there uh, it was like Oh, I can see everything where they're filming live, and just next to it is a screen screen we're using. <laughs> yeah, they had a C- CYK wall that they painted, so it's like a curved wall with the green screen on it nice. and everything. Um, but it was like, you know, it was kind of off in the corner by the desk where everything was controlled for the live sets. 
Um, Rob's hat, his little point, his pointed hat that he wears in live sets is you can see that at the beginning of my video. Oh, cool. I didn't notice that. Yeah. So like it, you know, there's, there's psycho stick stuff all over the place in it. And uh, so I went to their studio to film this. We shot all day. We shot a ton of footage, uh, like a good half of it we didn't even use because mm-hmm. um, we just shot so much. And he he seemed to really like the the performance of the song, me actually rapping the song more than than a lot, than uh, you know any of the little skit things that we threw in. Some of them were included. Uh, I, wanted, I, I wanted to make sure that we included at least one of the Futurama memes so me squinting to the can't tell if, you know, <laughs> the, the fry squinting, yeah. I had to have that in there. And uh, so that wasn't in the original cut he sent me. So I made sure that that one was in. And I also wanted to do the shut up and take my money thing where I'm shoving a bag of food at somebody, but we couldn't find a good spot to put that. So, yeah. I, of course, naturally, now that I've seen the video a couple of times, I went, it'd probably go there. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> is that the way it always yeah. happens? I'm like, yeah, yeah I should have done that. Yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. It happens. I mean, I, that used to happen to me all the time with 48 hour film project. I do a movie in 48 hours, like a little six minute movie and go, ah, there's one shot I could have used that would have made this work even better, you know, but it's just the way it hashes out. But yeah. uh, the stuff he did on the green screen effects for this are fantastic. I, I, I love it. Like I kind of, we kind of just shot a bunch of stuff and I just kind of left it to him to edit. Cause I, I trusted his, his vision. Cause I've seen his, videos that he's done for psycho stick and i'm like this is a guy who knows comedy beats and and knows editing and stuff and i'm not great with green screen as it is and this seemed like this would be the the ideal guy to work with on something like this and it turned out i was absolutely right this video is fantastic and you can watch it now at youtube.com slash insane ian or on the fump.com or on the the front page of the fump it is uh, the featured video on the fump right now so yes because I'm lazy and I don't want to give people the whole URL. <laughs> like, go to the thump. It's there. You can see it. Yep. It's right there on the thump. <laughs> All right. So do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, I am still taking pre-orders for my new album, which should be out next month. Knock on wood. Uh, it is called Illinois. Uh, Corey Can't Even is available on it, as is Delivery Boy and a bunch of other songs. Uh, you can pre-order the album now at insaneian.bandcamp.com. And if you pre-order the album, you get a bonus live album of my performance from this year's Fump Fest. When the album comes out, both of those albums will be available separately. But if you pre-order it on insaneian.bandcap.com, you get the live album as a bonus for free. Also, I'm, of course, have a Patreon at patreon.com slash insaneian, where you get to hear these songs early, get to see my music videos early, get to see the weekly videos I do early, vote in polls, and all sorts of other cool stuff like that. That really helps me to make more music and videos. And of course, if you don't want to do that and just want to subscribe to my stuff, it's youtube.com slash insaneian. All right. Thanks for joining us, dude. Thanks for having me. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Making the internet absolutely ridiculous. Dementia Radio. www.dementiaradio.org. Port 8027. Please hang up and try again. This is the part where there's feedback. 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 You know that segment of the show we do about now? Feedback. Feedback. (laughs) Feedback. (laughs) Feedback. Wacky Ben wrote, Feedback. Root beer. Castlevania. Turkey. Mustard. Did I mention feedback? Thank you, Ben. And that's all the feedback we got. So, uh, teasing. teasing. He's a teasing kind of guy. Now you have a job. Yeah. We can't tease anything. Because tomorrow's song is by a new artist. And Tuesday's song is not yet posted, and I still haven't put that bumper in here. And I'm not sure what I'm doing for the Spotify playlist yet. I will figure that out after the show tonight. So I, I know what song I want to play. I'm just not sure what topic I want to build around it. So Excellent. All right, so Insane Ian is at InsaneIan.com and InsaneIan.Bandcamp.com. Dan, plug yourself one more time. Captain Ambivalent, CaptainAmbivalent.com. Also on... Uh... Follow me on Twitter and see that that Thanksgiving thing.
I would definitely look that up. And your video <laughs> fixed itself now. It's nice seeing your, the lips move with the voice and stuff. Yeah, That's finally, fun. now by the end of the show, <laughs> it's working. It just had to catch know. up. It just took 45 minutes for the bandwidth to catch up to, to what I we were so. doing. I guess so. I'm just slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice. And I'm Luke Ski. I've got an ambivalent. <laughs> didn't cut to him thank you for listening to the funny <laughs> music podcast you can listen live every thursday night at 10 p.m eastern 7 pacific at dementiaradio.org and join us in the chat or subscribe to the podcast feed look us up on itunes and be sure to leave us a review feedback for the show can be sent to info at the funk.com the funny music podcast is a production of fidem interactive llc released under a creative commons share alike license tell your friends Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefump.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say, Are you a god?